Hi everyone, this is a little instructional video to go over how to use the tricorder. Firstly, please remember to handle the tricorder carefully as it's still a resin prop and is fragile. Dropping or putting undue stress on the door will likely break the tricorder. To turn on the tricorder and assuming the battery has enough charge, open the door and press down the PWR power button. You'll need to engage the physical push button to power up the tricorder. If your sound circuit is turned on, you will hear a beep. You can now let go of the button and the tricorder will boot up. To turn off the tricorder after the boot up sequence has finished, you can long press the physical power button again and this will shut down the tricorder. To continue, I will power the tricorder back on. Tapping any of the capacitive buttons will trigger a beep sound. Long pressing buttons would trigger a double beep. But be aware some buttons have a function assigned to the long press. One of these buttons is the Intership Tricorder button, which can be used to mute the tricorder. Asis and Besis are used to increase or decrease the volume. And you can use the MBG button to switch through the scanning modes. Long pressing this would cycle the scanning UI displayed. You will notice the lib LEDs will indicate the asset files loading. Some UI pages have large asset files, so I added this loading bar to show you the tricorder's progress at loading the asset file. As you cycle through the scanning pages, not only does the UI change its graphics, the LEDs also change the patterns they show. Once you reach the last UI page, long pressing the MGB button again will bring you back to the start. The next feature I want to show you is the emergency button. Pressing this triggers the emergency mode. You can now long press the MGB to bring yourself out of this. But long pressing the EMRG button again will take you to the next stage and show a countdown. When this countdown completes, it will show an upload effect and appear to power down. Please be aware the tricorder isn't truly powered down and the battery is still slowly draining in this state. Long pressing the PWR capacitive button or long pressing the MGB capacitive button will bring you out of this state. Opening and closing the door will trigger the ratchet sound. When the door is closed, I have made efforts to put as much of the tricorder into a sleep state to reduce power. But please be aware that when the door is closed, the tricorder is still drawing power off the battery and will eventually drain the battery. With the door closed, the power draw is dropped to about a quarter or more. Before we take a look inside the tricorder, I want to show you some setting options available to you. Long pressing the ID button will show the identification page. This page will hold the tricorder's serial number and the name you've given me to place in here. You will see three buttons here. You can set the LED brightness and the LCD brightness. This may be useful if you want to do cosplay photography and you need to adjust the brightness to fit the scene. This config data is stored on a file on the SD card. On very rare occasions, this file may become corrupt and you will need to delete it. This can only happen when saving data. If this happens, take the SD card out and place it in the computer and delete the CFG file. The third button is for calibrating the resistive touchscreen. This isn't terribly important given the limited functions of the tricorder, but I will show you how to calibrate the touchscreen.
Also note, if the LCD screen has a bad calibration, I have assigned some capacitive buttons to trigger this mode. In the ID page, if you long press the mini screen button, this will go into the config display. Follow the instructions on the screen, pressing the accept pool button. The tricorder will power down. When you power it back up, you will be greeted with the calibration screen. As I have cropped the display in my tricorder, the first target is just above the top edge of the display. Please press as close as possible to the target. For the other two targets, you can press as normal. The screen configuration will now be saved to the SD card and you can use the tricorder as normal. One very last option in the ID page is a late addition. Pressing the EMRG button in the ID page will turn off or turn on the power or PWR capacitive button. As this button has got some problems with its sensitivity, you may want to turn this capacitive button off. Let's now take a look inside the tricorder. So not to scratch the paint, it's best to use a blunt plastic pick. Something metal will work, but be very careful not to scratch the paint. The hatch is held with magnets. Simply lift the hatch and pull it away. Inside you will see the battery, the speaker and under it the main control board of the tricorder and next to that the SD card. Here is the USB socket for charging the tricorder. To charge the tricorder make sure the display mode switch here is in the off position and insert a USB cable. You can charge from any normal USB adapter that provides a 5 volt feed or off a computer port. If using an adapter, make sure it's one that has a 5 volt output or you may damage the tricorder. If the display mode switch is set to the on position, the tricorder will power up automatically, powered directly by the USB and this will not charge the battery. This is done so if you wish to place the tricorder in a display case and turn it on from an external source such as a light switch for the case, you can power and turn on the tricorder without having to remove it from the case and press the PWR button. This switch down here is for the sound circuit. If you wish to save power, such as on a cosplay floor, you can set this to off. This will turn off all sound effects including beeps. This will also significantly reduce power draw, doubling the battery's life or more. It is also recommended to turn this off if you wish to run this in a display case. Not only will the scanning sound become annoying after time, the audio amp chip does heat up and after a while can reach 50 degrees centigrade. I have not been able to test the very long term effects of this increased heat. If you ever need to remove the battery, pull on the yellow captain tape tab I have placed on the battery. This will lift the battery out of its friction fit space and gently tug on the wire to remove it from the socket. You will also need to do this on the rarest of occasions if the tricorder program hangs or crashes. You will also need to do this if the battery begins to fail or wear out. If the battery ever heats up or starts to balloon up, remove the battery as soon and as carefully as possible. Replacement batteries can be found on the AliExpress link I have already provided. When the battery is fully charged, a red light behind the battery socket will turn off. Remove the USB cable carefully and gently put the hatch back onto the back of the tricorder. You may now continue to use the tricorder as normal. Thank you, I hope you enjoy the tricorder, goodbye.